Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Chong Chi Huang. I'm from Cadence DDR IP group. I'm managing the uh, signal and power integrity team. So today I want to talk about uh, the topic is eye diagram. So the eye diagram is a very uh, useful tool for the design engineer to gauge the quality of the signal. So it contains a lot of uh, information. So for untrained eye, you probably just look at like a, a regular a plot look like an eye. But for the trained eye, you can uh, extract a lot of useful information by looking at the eye diagram. So today, I hope uh, after this short talk, uh, I can give you the trained eye and you can extract the useful information uh, next time you look into the eye diagram. So uh, before uh, we talk about eye diagram, uh, we need to talk about how eye diagram uh, was generated. So here is a picture of uh, a typical, uh, very simplistic uh, communication system where you have a transmit, transmitter, receiver, and the channel, right? So here I already uh, plot out what the waveform will look like. So this point, let's call it a point A, and here let's call it point B, right? And here is the waveform if you observe at a point A. And this is a waveform here if you observe at a point B. So what happened is the, this is a binary system. That means the signal sent out is the digital either zero or one. So here you got a B string like a zero, one, zero, one, zero, right? Blah, blah, blah. And it's pretty clean because it's just in the beginning of a channel, right? So after the channel, because the, the channel means it's, it's uh, like a printed circuit board package and it has some degradation, it will degrade your channel. So at the point B, when you signal travel through the channel to the receiver, what you see is the distorted signal. So in this case, uh, you can see the, the signal is no longer has a very sharp edge, it got slowed down, and it doesn't go all the way to the, uh, to the top or bottom because it's busy doing the toggling. So what I mean by that is, uh, uh, so this one thing I forgot to mention is I draw the line here. Those are the, the bit boundary, okay? So this is the bit time, and or we call it the UI, which stands for the unit interval. So the way to generate the eye diagram is uh, if you slice your data in the bit window, and if you just fold it on top of each other, right? So what will you get is the eye diagram. If you do that for this guy, what you get is, is, is something like this. I need to make it larger. Okay. So it's something like this. It's pretty clean. But here you will see something different. If I repeat the same procedure to generate the eye diagram, what you will see will be something like this. So why am I getting this? Because after the channel, uh, what you will get is two kind of uh, uh, two kind of uh, uh, waveform. One is uh, the top and bottom, right? Those is when the signal settles at the high and low. Right? That's called a non-transition bit. So eventually, the non-transition bit, eventually it will settle at high or low. But those transition bit uh, does not have enough time for the signal to go all the way to the rail. That's why you see this. And if you look into uh, the ratio, of this, uh, let's call it the inner eye, it's called A. And the, the rail to rail uh, amplitude is called B. Apparently, this A over B ratio 
is something related to the channel loss. So by, by looking at this eye diagram itself, looking at the ratio inner eye and uh, the high of the total, uh, the rail to rail eye height, you can already extract the information that there's a channel loss, okay? But the story doesn't end here. So the actual system, uh, when the transmitter launched the signal, uh, the, the transition doesn't happen right at the, uh, the bit boundary because there will be timing uncertainty during the, the noise in the device or in the power delivery system, there's a supply noise. So what happens is uh, your transition edge uh, will be dithering around the ideal point. So that will further close up your eye, right? So then if I do a slice here, okay, and if I track all those uh, transition edge a crossover with this reference point, let's say I have a reference voltage here, and what happens if you track all those uh, transition edge, what you will get if I draw like this, this is the ideal uh, B boundary, and if I track the, uh, the, the location or the location in time of those transition edge, what you get is a distribution like this. And the peak, the peak probability happen during the ideal transition edge, and you will taper down like this, right? So if you draw this uh, distribution function, usually uh, people do it in a different scale. They, they do it in log scale. And what happens is uh, if you ignore the two outer edge, because only, you only care about the, the inner tail, because that's how your eye get close. Outer tail is, uh, uh, is uh, the previous bit or the next bit, which is irrelevant in our discussion here. So what happens is that you will get something like this. So if you draw this tail and this tail, in the log scale, you will see something like this. And this is the ideal uh, unit interval. And you can see when you keep going, if you collect enough uh, data, many, many bits, and you will further close up, some real event could further close up your eye. So from the statistics, you can predict where the eye get close. And by this distribution, you can extract the jitter information. Okay. So enough said about how to extract the information. And how do we use the, the eye diagram is uh, uh, we have to talk about something called the IMS. Let's say when you have an eye. So how do we say this eye is good or bad? It's really you need something called the IMS. So for receiver, usually the uh, uh, based on the design of the receiver, there's a receiver sensitivity. Let's say the receiver need to see this much of amplitude when it comes when the signal comes in, and you also need a window. There's a setup time and the hold time as required for the receiver to function uh, normally. So in the end, you will get a box. That means this box needs to fit in into uh, your eye diagram. As long as your eye is larger than the IMS, you will guarantee your receiver will work correctly and you can resolve the signal whether it's one or zero. If it's the eye is encroaching upon this window, that means that there's no guarantee. You may start to see the uh, so-called bit error happen because it's is beyond what you basically you void the warranty. So in short, uh, in summary, so the, the eye diagram is a very uh, useful tool uh, for the uh, designer to gauge the quality of signal. And I hope after the talk uh, or next time when you see the eye diagram, you know how to extract all those useful information. Thank you. Thank you.